The doors that we walk through have power in our lives. And I got to tell you that uh, tonight as I come before you, I just want you to know that I know who you are. I know where you're at. I may not know you by name, but here's what I know. I know that there are a lot of voices in your life. And as a matter of fact, there are a lot of doors that you've already walked through. And I just want to be honest, walking through doors, being invited by a voice into to have access to something new is intoxicating. So I remember I was in the Dominican Republic, and I had a bunch of young men. A young men, where you at? Give me a little what's up. Let me get a little grunt. Something manly. Give me something. What you got? One, two, three. Fellas. That was, that was man card revoking worthy. So on the count of three, just make a man noise. One, two, three, fellas. Here's my guys. So I was with a bunch of guys, uh, young men, and then I was with a bunch of young ladies. Ladies, where you at? And I just got to be honest, like, I wanted, here's what I believe, what I believe about you. I believe that God made you, that God formed you, that, he, that he's fashioned you, and that you have purpose in your veins. And that from the time that you figure out that you are the son, that you are the daughter of God, that there's something so powerful inside of you. And I, I, and I literally, I would give my life for you to figure that out. So for me, uh, you know, I love taking people out of the country. I remember we took about 100, and there's probably about 115 people on this trip. And here's what we said. We said, you know, we're going to go down, and we would go down there every single year. We would go down to this place called The Hole. In The Hole, it's this community where there's this trash heap. And we would be building, like, literally, uh, fellas, guys would be digging these massive latrines 20 feet deep so these communities could have uh, places to go, you know, the bathroom, go sanitary, somebody would care about them. Uh, we're, we're loving on the kids of drug dealers and prostitutes. So I'm just telling you, we went on mission because here's what I believe. I believe that your life was meant for way more than you. And I just remember we'd have those days and we'd, just, and we'd work so hard and we would love so hard. And on one of those moments, you know, one night uh, we were all up in this top of the roof and everybody was hanging out. And in a, in a, the, one of the uh, missionaries at the time kind of came in. He'd had a tough schedule. I hadn't seen him in like over a year. And he said, dude, we have got to grab a meal. Is there any way you can peel away from the group? Let's go get a real meal, man. Like I, like I got this restaurant. It's, it's a little bit nicer. We're like, we're like hanging in the hood. We've eaten chicken and rice for like nine days straight. Like every meal is chicken and rice. And so we're like, you know, I'm like, you know, it sounds pretty good. I feel a little bad. But I was like, all right, man, what do I need? He's like, I got some clothes for you. It's a little bit nicer. You can't just wear like work clothes. It's like, all right, man, come on. So we hop in a car. So we head out to this place. There's not a lot of nice places in Santiago, Dominican Republic, but there's one place that's a really nice place. And I'm like, dang, son, you're taking me. And they're like, okay, I'm ready. I'm like ready for a good meal. So he's taking me to this nice restaurant. We, should, we, get, we get ready to pull up into the parking lot of this place. As we pull up, and there's all of a sudden I look around, and I've been there before, but I've never been in one of these restaurants. It's pretty swanky for the place. And, and I look around, and there's, there's like lights like this, and there's a stage like this, and there's a bunch of people in like black ties, and they're all dressed up. I'm like going, dang, what are you bringing me to? And he's like, oh, no, man. Like, I don't know what this is, but, but our restaurant's on the other side of this. And, and he's like, you know what, let me just get out. Let me just figure out if we can kind of get through this and get to our restaurant. So we make our way up. As we're making up our, our, our way up through the parking lot, we get closer, and I'm starting to see, like, this is, man, they, they're hanging, they're, they're, like, walking around with, like, filet mignon. They got, like, shrimp hanging out. And I've been, like, eating chicken and rice for, like, a week. I'm, like, dying. I'm, like, ah, oh, come on, man. I want a real meal. I'm so hungry. And so as we walk up, I, the closer that we get to this, like, like, right here, there's, like, a passageway through, and there's this door, like, where these big old bodyguards are standing there. And the closer we get to the door, the more I recognize that I want what's on the other side. But it, we're not getting through, man. Like, they're all, they all speak Spanish. We don't belong. We didn't have an invite. So we get up to the door, and we're like, hey, we're trying to get to that restaurant over there. And like, they're like, I'm like, what? and he's like, we're not making it in. I was like, all right, man. So we turn around, and we start to leave. And out of the crowd, true story, out of the crowd, there's this guy. And my friend's name is Brooke. And he's like, Brooke, Brooke. <laughs> he's like doing this. He's like, come on, come on, come on. And I'm like, he's like, we got, we got a spot for you. Why don't you come in? And I'm like, dang, VIP, here we come. So we, so literally, like the crowd parts, these big old body 
guards, they open this door, and we follow this voice through the crowd, right? So we start following this voice through the crowd. We start walking past the tables. We start making our way up to the front of the stage. It's kind of like this. And I'm like, dang, man, we're, I don't even know what this is. But as I start to get up there, anybody, anybody uh, when I was younger, um, anybody watch the Spanish channel just because? Who, who speaks Spanish in here? Anybody speak Spanish? Any, who, love it, love it. Who knows what Telemundo is? So all of a sudden, I don't know a lot, but all of a sudden I see the lady on the stage and it's the chick from Telemundo. And I'm like, next level. The chick from Telemundo is here. I'm so pumped. And then all of a sudden I see that and we start, he keeps pulling us up, pulls up, and there's like right over to this side of the stage, there's like this raised stage and there's like this one seating area and they've got kind of some lights on that. And this guy walks us straight up on this platform And now we're sitting at the head table of the event, and they're all speaking in Spanish, and I don't know why. And they sit us down, and I'm like, this is the best night of my life, man. Like, I got the Telemundo chick. I got a steak on the way. I don't know what kind of VIP party that I'm a part of right now, but this just got amazing. The music is going. The lights are going. I'm like, this is so cool. I don't know what anybody's saying, but this is amazing. So as I sit there, uh, it starts to dawn on me. Anybody ever do this? Anybody ever hear a voice calling you through the door? You start stepping through that door and you start to recognize that the door that you just walked through might not be the door that you thought it was going to be? So here's the deal. So I step up and I sit here and all of a sudden I realize and I start looking at Brooke and I'm like, like who, who are these guys? He's like, uh, this is kind of weird, but this is like the Dominican Mafia. cool. For real? And he's like, yeah, man, this is, this is weird. This is getting weird, man. I was like, oh, okay, it's cool, man. This is fine. It's fine. Then all of a sudden, the lights come on. Lights come on. Telemundo chick makes her way over. She starts interviewing the table, the guy right next to us. Y'all, I'm on Telemundo with the Dominican Mafia. And then As we're sitting there, it dawns on me what we're a part of. Because as we're sitting there at this table, sitting with the mafia at the head, and I'm now on Telemundo, I start to see um, all of these women coming out in G-string bikinis and parading across the stage. And I'm at the Dominican Miss Universe pageant, or Dominican Miss Dominican pageant, thinking, Father, please do not let one of the parents of those hundred kids that I have in the hood watch their pastors that say, oh, is that our pastor sitting with the Dominican Mafia watching a bikini contest on Telemundo right now? Yo, I wanted to die. Like, I, you know, I got a little girl back here. Ladies, I am not about you being objectified, and it's getting bad, and I feel weird, and it's getting awkward. And I'm just get, sitting here going, it turned from I just want steak and this is awesome and this is incredible to get me out of here. Why do I say that? Because I want to get real with you tonight and I just want to be real. Because here's what I believe. I believe that, not, that, that, here's the deal. Some of you have walked through doors, have listened to voices in your life, and I'm telling you this, you're already, you're already old enough to know this. The doors that you've walked through and the voices that you've trusted have put you in places that you never thought you would be. As a matter of fact, if I could fast forward some of your lives, and here's the deal, some of you in the room, you just barely walk through the door. You're like me walking through the crowd, and you're seeing some things in your life going around you, and you're like, man, this is still awesome. And I'm just here to say, we're going to fast forward your life a little bit and get you to open your eyes a little bit because you're smarter than that. Because the reality is, is for so many of you in the room already, you recognize but man, there, there's some voices you listen to and there's some doors you walk through and you didn't end up in the place you thought. I, some of you remember. You remember being on the back side of the door at that first party that you knew you shouldn't have gone to, man. You knew what happened there. You knew what it meant for your future. But something out, there's something inside of you that said, listen, I'm tired of not having access. What I know is, is that access is intoxicating. Get on the other side is intoxicating. I'm tired of being left out. 
of the laughter. I'm tired of being t- left out of the text. I'm tired of le- being left out of that thing that seems like it's, like it's just fun, man. I just want to have fun. I just want to show up. But you knew in your gut, man, you knew it. You knew when you walked through the door of that party that something was going to change in you. And all of a sudden, man, you walk through, and, and man, the first party was great, and the second party was great, but fast forward, man, where are you at now? How's your soul? Some of you, the door was different. The door was, you know what, you're, 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 you're just standing outside, and you're like, you know what, listen, man, I'm in high school. I'm tired of being alone. I want somebody to text me. I want somebody to, to love me. I want somebody going, oh, girl, you so fine. Oh, I just can't think about you. I just... And somebody just texts you and I going, I just can't stop thinking about you, girl. <laughs> oh, you know, I know you. <laughs> and some of you guys, right? Some of you guys, man, you're like, you're like, man, I just, man, my, my, my other fellows have somebody. And some of it, you've, you've got some stuff inside of you. And so, and, 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 uh, and I'll get to, you know, we'll get to that. But I'm just saying, some of you, this door wasn't a party, this door was a basement. And you're like, look, man, I just just don't want to be alone. And you girls, you're just like, man, I just don't want somebody to love me. And guys, you're like, I just want somebody there. And and you got a million reasons. But at some point, you walk through a door, and you know it. And all of a sudden, man, you're like, man, I don't. Girls, you know, like, you like, you walk through the door, you listen, you, you trusted a boy. You let him into some places and spaces in your heart. And you know you, you know you wish you could go back. And the problem is now that somebody's been in the door, the next guy knocking. It's real hard not to let them in the door. And then how many, how many people have been through the door? How many, heart, how many times has your heart been let down? How many times has your heart been broken? Fellas, it's the same way. You know, for some of you, it's that door of addiction. You, you just, you, I rem- maybe it's junior high. I don't remember the first time, fellas, you looked at porn, but you do. It's something inside of your heart. And by the way, it's not just guys anymore. It's girls too. But something inside of you, I, I, I don't know how you got there. And it was probably like there's something on the other side. There's something my friends are talking about. There's something that's accessed. And, and you just said, man, just, I just, I just want to check it out, man. It's like, like I don't want to be addicted like those people. But, man, I just, I just want to see. I just want to experience. I want, just want to taste. And somehow you walk through the door. And maybe it started on TikTok. And TikTok, my, 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 the boys around me call it just pregame to porn. Because my feed is nothing but girls, and then it feeds me to another place. But here's the thing. At some point, you walk through the door, and, and we can say all we want, but, but let me say two things. Fellas, you know you don't want to be that guy. I know you. Nothing inside of you wants to be the guy that can't stop Looking at women can't stop being. Some of you, it's different. Maybe there's a sports store. You thought, you know what, man? You know, everybody's told me something from the time I was little. I, I got a couple kids like this. They're super talented. They're super gifted. And they're super sports stuff. And you're just like, you know what? You know, I just, and, and it's not as serious as porn. It's not as serious as party and drugs and all that kind of stuff. But somehow, some way, you said, you know what? I knocked on the door and I just trusted. I trusted that my whole life could be wrapped up in sports. I am a basketball player. I am a cheerleader. I am a really smart guy that gets good grades. And, get a good th- and, and somehow, you step through a door and you gave it your life and you've trusted that that's who you are and that's what's going to make you happy and that's where your future is going to be and then you find yourself down the road and you just recognize you know what I'm right in the middle of football I'm right in the middle of sports I'm doing stuff I never thought so why is my heart so empty man so here's the thing man I think I think the voices that we listen to and the doors that we walk through matter 
you know, some of you, some of you have, you know, <laughs> have opened doors and they didn't take you where you thought. Some of you have doors that you just, they've never opened. You just wish they would. So right now, some of you, some of you girls, some of you guys, you're standing on the backside of a door with, with and just, you just really wish you weren't so alone. And you just wish, man. You're just like, man, I just, I want that, man. I, I want a girl. I want a guy. And why is it that I keep trying and it never works? Or I get the wrong person or not the one that I want. And all the options on the table aren't things that I want. And something inside of you, it starts feeling like a black hole. And you're spending your life waiting for a voice to call you through the door. Because if you could just get that guy, if you could just get that girl, then you'd finally be happy. Some of you have done that with sports. You're like, you know what, I haven't made it on the team, or I haven't got that scholarship, or I haven't. And so you're spending your life outside of a door longing for a voice to pull you into the thing that you know in your soul that you would give anything for. And I'm just here to tell you, I don't care who you are. It's not going to take you where you think. For some of you, and this is like me, I'll get into this. Some, for some of you, the door was opened, but it wasn't you. Let me put it like this, like there was a choice that somebody else listened to. There was a decision that your parent made. There was a decision that an older sibling made. There's a, there's a decision that some boy, some girl, somewhere, they made a decision and they shouldn't have and, and they didn't have permission. But what happened to you and what that did to your heart and how that's wrecked you? Listen, maybe you didn't open the door, but you feel like you're in a spot right now that, man, you're not sure how to get out of and it's certainly not where you want things to be. So here's what I want to say. I'll get positive, I promise. But I want to make sure we're being real. Because I just, don't you know, don't you already know, man, not every voice you listen to, you can trust. Don't you know right now, like, not every door you walk through is going to take you where you think it's going to take you. So one of the, you know, the reason that we read the passage that we did was because Jesus was, was in the middle of that. He was looking at a bunch of people, and if you know anything about Jesus, Jesus can't lie. Like, there's no part of him. As a matter of fact, the, the farther I get into following Jesus, I just get so mad because I'm so tired of, brother, sister, I love you. I don't even know you, I love you. I get so tired of you being lied to, man. And Jesus just had that in him. Jesus doesn't know how to lie. He doesn't know how to do anything but be real. That's in his nature. I guarantee you, I could, I, I could stand up here all night and, and, and pass the mic around. Has Jesus ever lied to anyone in the room? Won't happen. He hasn't done it once. Has a girlfriend, has a coach, has a parent. I love your parents. I'm, I'm sure your parents are great, but our parents have moments. So here's the thing. Jesus just says to this group of people, he just says, listen, um, and, I, and I just want to walk this through. He says, listen, man, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like this. He said, I need you to know, man, I'm, 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 I'm like the door. It's like there's, there, there's going to be a lot of things, a lot of voices. He says, I, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm also the voice. I'm the voice on the door. He, he sets himself up. It's like a parable. It's like a word picture. He's trying to help you to see something about him that will help you navigate the voices and the doors that you're walking through all the time. So he just says, listen, man, and, you know, I'm like the door. He says, if, if, if anybody, if anybody would just, would just come to me, would walk through me, then here's the thing. You're going to find life, and you're going to find happiness. You're going to find help. You're going to find, he says, it's kind of like this. I'm the door. He says, it's kind of like this. It's like door, and then there's, he uses this, this word picture. He says, there's, it's like a sheep and shepherds. So sheep, it's like this door. So like inside the door, it's like, like you're all the sheep, and I'm a good shepherd. He says, here's the deal. I love you. And if you'll trust me, 
You're going to walk through the door. You're going to walk through me, and I'm going to take you to some place. And I promise you this. I will never lie to you. Inside of here, I'm going to have provision. I'm going to have purpose. I'm going to have passion. I'm going to have wholeness. I'm going to have real relationships. I'm going to have who you were made to be. Like on the other side of that, you will never find your identity like what I'm going to show you in here. I'm just telling you, everything in here is genuine and it's real and it's better than everything else. So here's the deal. I'm the door and I'm the shepherd and you're the sheep and I want to lead you somewhere. But then he says this. He says, but, but, but I need you to know Let's just be real. You can't, you can trust me. You can't trust everybody. And he, and he breaks it down like this. He says, so there's kind of two, to group, two groups of people, right? So he says, one of, the, one of those groups of people, it, 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 I'm going to call them thieves and robbers, Jesus says. They're thieves and robbers. So these are the kind of people, and I'm like, thieves and robbers. Like, like I grew up in the hood. Anybody else grew up in the hood? Yeah, a couple of us, cool. <laughs> Sorry, that just got me tickled. When I think of robbing people, man, it's, it's not a pretty picture. I got six bikes stolen while I was on the bike. Not cool. So when I think of sheep being, when I think of sheep and I think of thieves and robbers, then it's like, well, sheep, they don't have anything. Well, that's kind of the point. So what does a sheep have? A sheep only has two things, really. You know what they are? They have wool. Somebody say fur. <laughs> you need to go back and figure things out. It's cool. Sheep have wool, and sheep have what? They have meat. And you're like, ah, uh, where are we going? So check this. Jesus says there's actually some voices in your life, and let me just describe them. There's kind of two groups. One group says so it's, it's all about wool and meat. What's that mean? Well, there are voices in your life and there are doors that they want to lead you through that really has little to do with caring about you. It has more to do with making them look good. He said, I just want you to know that, man. I just want you to know. And you kind of already know that there are people that really don't wants you to walk through this door because what's on the other side is out of their deep love and concern for you. It's because if you'll go through this door, if you'll show up to the party, if you'll put your arm around my shoulder, or if I can put it around your waist, then here's the reality. You're going to make me look good. You're going to make me feel secure. He says, so thieves and robbers. One is you're going you're gonna to make me look good. And the other one's meat. What's meat? Well, meat is when you get hungry, you got to feed a brother. So he says, listen, food is all about desire. It's about meeting a base need. Every single one of us wants to eat. And he says, a thief and a robber, when it comes to the voices in your life, one of them is going to say, listen, um, you, and he says, listen, I just want you to know that there are going to be people that are just wanting you to look, you know, to, to make them look. And on the other side, he says, and listen, there are going to be other people I just want to be real. It really doesn't, you're not on their radar the way you think that you are. It has more to do with meeting a desire for them that they need filled. Fellas, what does this look like? What this looks like for a fella, fellas, you don't get, often get treated like a piece of meat, do you? <laughs> you're like, well, I catch, anyways, sorry. But for a guy to be treated like a piece of meat is this. It's like, it's, it's like somebody that just says, you know what, um, really, I just, I have this base desire. Any guy ever dated a girl? And she just, and girls, not, not you in here, you're awesome. But I've heard of these other girls that only date guys because they just don't want to be lonely. And they just don't want to be the only girl that doesn't have somebody. And here's the real thing. They, they're not really sure that they care about them, and they're certainly not prepared to, to love you the way that my girl loves me. And girls, do I even need to tell you about what it means to be treated like a piece of meat? 
Do I even have to explain that sometimes, fellas, I'm sure not you all in here, I'm talking about these other guys that I've heard about, (laughs) that dating, chasing after, going after your girl has very little to do with your deep love for her and your desire for her to become the amazing, incredible, faith-filled daughter of the king that she was made for, then it has more to do with the fact that you just have some base desires and she's the hottest thing you can find. So here's, here's, I don't know what you know about Jesus. Jesus was real. So hear Jesus say, just know, just know, those aren't voices you can trust. Just know that those doors, when you walk through them, you will always find yourself in a spot you don't want to be, man. But he says there's, there's two groups. One's thieves and robbers, and the other group over here, is, he says, it's like the hired hand. Well, who's the hired hand? Well, the hired hand isn't a bad person. Hired hand is like somebody that's like, man, I'll do the job. And you're like, you look fairly competent. I like you. How much can you bench? Sweet. Come on. So we get you over and we get you in the job. And you're like, man, I'm, I'm going to show up. I'm going to be on time. I've got a good heart. He says, listen, there's some people that they, they, they really it has more to do with meeting a need for them. And this other group, he says, it's like these hired hands. But here's the problem with a hired hand. See, a hired hand means that there are these other people that, but that, that being in their lives and the voices that they're calling you to and the doors that you're, they're inviting you through, it's not because they're bad people. You need to hear that. But Jesus says, but again, can we just be real? Just know that when push comes to shove, when things get weird, he says this, when he paints a picture like when there's a wolf that comes and starts to attack the sheep, you just need to know that a hired hand will never lay his life down for you. They're not bad. I always heard it like this. Most people aren't against you. Most people are just for themselves. He said, look, man, I'm not saying they're bad. But when your life is really in a place where, man, you need somebody to come through, man, to do like this supernatural in your life because your heart is distant and your heart is cold. And fellas, you're so mad. You're so angry. You don't know how to fix it. He said, listen, there's going to be some things in your life that are going to be so big and they're going to be so dangerous and there are things that can wipe you out, can take you down. And he's saying, listen, there's some people, it's not that your friends are bad. It's not that the situation's bad. I'm just telling you, they can't do what a good shepherd can. So Jesus just says, he says, in the midst of that, I just need you to know I'm the good shepherd. So let me tell you this story. So I told you I grew up in the hood, did. As a matter of fact, um, uh, I'm, I'm the only, well, I've got kind of siblings from different marriages. I don't know where you're at out there, but some of you are like me. And I don't have the worst story. I just have a story. But I just remember that when I was growing up, there were cops in and out of the house all the time. I'm the only one of my siblings that hasn't spent time in prison. My brothers had me smoking weed by six. Can I get a witness to anybody? So what I know is there was a lot of abuse in the house. I know that it was really dark in the house, but I'm just telling you, no matter how bad things got, there was something that happened in my house, and that was a mom who who literally, my mom was like a radiant light because something happened when I was younger when my mom fell madly in love with Jesus. And y'all, it was like a sonic boom in the hood. You know, I'm just telling you, man, I, I, I remember, I remember, I remember all the drama. My dad came back from the, the, you know, he was a Special Forces Vietnam veteran. He was a super rough, tough dude, and he would just, some of you know. And it wasn't good, and it was really dark. And I remember going to these prayer meetings with my mom, and I just wanted to hold on to her because she was the only thing, because I had seen all the other doors. I saw where my brothers walked. I saw where all these people around me went, and I saw the consequences in their life. And I knew at that moment, I don't want that, but I don't know how to get that. Anybody ever done that? I don't know. I know I don't want it, 
but I don't know how to get it. So I remember I went, I was, I was tiny, man, and we went to this prayer meeting. It was on a Wednesday night, and they were praying over my family. And literally, they were praying over my family because my brother had just gotten beat really bad and stabbed at school. So they're praying over us, and I'm getting ready to go into kindergarten at the time, and, and, and they're just pouring out these prayers for my mom. And they're just saying, you know, God, you got to show up in this family. And, and we get ready to leave, and my mom and I walk out, and we go to the car. And when we got to the car, um, like it needed a jump because it always needed a jump, and it always broke down. And so we went back inside to get a jump, and we were kind of like out at this kind of preppy, you know, like suburbs church where everybody was shiny. And we walked in the door. As we walked in the door, they just looked at us, and they were all crying, and we were like, what happened? And they were like, we're just praying, and we feel like, we feel like your boys are supposed to go, go to this tiny the, the school, the church. We feel like God's going to do something with their lives. My mom was like, that sounds great, but, man, we ain't got any money. There's no way. So they're like, we'll just pray about it. And so they prayed about it. Three days later, I'm showing up to this tiny little school, Christian school, out in the suburbs where, y'all, I don't fit, man. Like, everybody else looks like this. I got one pair of jeans. I got three shirts. Everything's got a hole in them. And I remember walking down the, literally, anybody that's ever been through trauma, man, you remember stuff earlier than you probably should, but I remember walking down this hallway just, just scared out of my mind because I knew that I loved Jesus, and I knew that this, but there was a door that I was about to walk through that scared me out of my mind, and as I walked through the door of that kindergarten class, true story, my mom tells us she cries like a baby. I walked through that classroom door, and I looked at a bunch of people. Like some of you are looking at this group. You're like, yeah, it's easy for them, man. Their lives are all put together, and they're all shiny. They don't know me. They don't know where I've been. They don't know what my eyes have seen. And I just remember sitting in that door, and all of a sudden, Mrs. Shaw, kindergarten teacher, girl, ooh, awesome. She sees me across the room, and she lights up, and she says, Matthew. I'm like, yeah, that's me, right? Yes, me. She walks over. She gives me this big hug. She says, I'm so glad you're here, which some of you right now, I don't know where you're at, but some of you need to know, man, he loves that you're here. Somebody needs to tell you that, man. You, you were meant to be here. God has plans for your life. So anyway, she walks over to me and she puts, and she lifts up my head and I have two different colored eyes. She said, young man, you have two different colored eyes? I said, yes, ma'am. She said this, true story. She leans over, she said, young man, you have been marked by God. God has had great plans for you and I'm praying that the Lord helps us to prepare you for the ministry that you have. We are so glad you're here. Now look, look, she could have said it to everybody else that walked through the door. I didn't care. Because for the first time in my life, I knew that there was a voice on, on the other side of a door pulling me through the door. And I knew it was a place that I wanted to be. And I knew it was something that if you fast forward my life 20 years from now, even as a six-year-old, I knew enough about darkness to know I didn't want it, man. I want the light. I want to be like, like have purpose in my chest. And so in the middle of that, I just, I, just, I, just want to, I just want to say a simple message to you, and I want to give you a simple opportunity. It's not rocket science. I need you to hear the words of Jesus over your life today. To just say, listen, man, there's a lot of voices in your life. I get it. There's a lot of doors, young man, young woman, that you are right now walking through, and you know it cannot take you. Where if you stop and use your head for a second, where you want to be. How do I know? Y'all know how many NFL football players that I've met that thought their whole life was going to be made once they got to the NFL, and then they find themselves in, in their wrecked. I, I know two pro bowlers by, by first name, know their families, love them, and I know that football will not give you what only Jesus can give you. I can tell you about that about MLB players. I can tell you that about, about successful businessmen that, that run like half of cities and that are coming down to make decisions because their lives are a wreck because all they've, the, the voices that they've pursued their whole life can't possibly take them. 
where only Jesus can take them. So tonight, I just, I just want you to hear something really simple. This is the gospel. The man you're loved. And Jesus hates that you've been lied to. Guys and girls alike. And this is kind of what he's like. It's not completely, but it's kind of what he's like. He's like a good shepherd. He's a good dad. He says, listen to me. There are a lot of the, the, the enemy, all those other voices, those things come to steal and rob and destroy. But I'm just telling you, I promise you, and he has never, ever lied. He says, I've come that you could have a real life and have it to the fullest. He says, listen, this door that I'm leading you through, and I know you don't believe it because you're listening to all these other voices. But really, like if you would trust me, and if you would follow my voice, and if you would walk through this door, I promise I can give you in your heart what you were made for. But you got to walk through the door. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I'm just... I think most of the sermon tonight that I'm preaching, you already know. I, I can tell it to you that there's a God who loves you, that made you, that before you were formed in your mother's womb, that you were no accident. I don't care who said what to you. And I don't how, care how early those things happened. But if, if I can watch young men from inner city streets that have been sold to other men to rape them from the time that they were four and watch them find their destiny and watch them step into ministry and become these amazing men, I promise whatever you're facing is gonna be okay for him. I'm just telling you, I've watched him do it. I'm here to tell you that he has an extravagant love for you. I'm here to tell you that no matter what you've done in your past, that he says this, listen, I'm not the kind of shepherd that kind of hangs out when it's okay and when it's easy, but when the attack comes along, I, I leave and bolt like everybody else. He says, listen, I'm the kind of shepherd that I will lay my life down for you. He says, I have already laid my life down for you. That's how much he loved you. He says, and listen, here's what I'm inviting you into. I'm inviting you to listen to my voice to recognize that all these other voices, man, they're not what you think they are. And to step into, step through a door that you'll never regret. So two things, and, and then I'm going to let you just listen for a voice. And tonight you're going to have an opportunity to walk through a door. So who are they? Well, it's kind of two groups of people, right? So there's some people in this room that, that I'm just... I'm just going to say this. You've never responded to the voice of Jesus to accept him as Lord and Savior. I don't know why. Maybe this is the first time you've heard it. Maybe this is all new to you. Maybe you're like me. You're like, man, that's for all the pretty people. That's not for me. Maybe you're one of the pretty people, and you're like, I'm one of the pretty people, but you don't know the pain that I've got too. I don't know who you are. But I know this. I know that tonight, that if you would hear his voice, no matter who you are and what you've done, if you'd respond in faith and say, I just want you, I want your voice. I don't know how to figure out. I don't know how to figure my life out. I don't know what I'm headed back to. I don't know how to get out of all the stuff that I'm in. All I know is, yes, I see the lies. I'm tired of the lies. And Jesus, I want you, man. I want to follow you. I know in my soul, that it says, the sheep know my voice. You know right now if he's speaking to you. You just got to listen. And there's another group of you. Some of you in here, man, you've, 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 you've walked through the door. You accepted Christ and you went to camp or you did this thing or your parents are around and you got baptized. But it's this funny thing in verse 9. He says, here's the thing. You're going to come in 
And you're like, yeah, I want to go in. Like, I remember the first time I stepped in, and I found his grace, and I found his power, and I realized that, man, I was made for more, and that, that he loves me as I am, and that he has plans for my life, and that he wants to use me in powerful, strong ways. But here's the thing, man. I went back to my everyday life. He says, you're going to come in, and you're going to come out. And you're like, okay, I went in, and I experienced his grace. But then all of a sudden, I hop out back in life, and it was like one bad decision, two bad decision, three bad decision, four. And all of a sudden, you're like, man, it must not have taken. Maybe it wasn't real. Maybe it just didn't count. Maybe it can't last. Last, and you're just like, man, I just, I would give anything right now to just go back because I want it, but I don't know how to get it. And I'm just telling you right now as your friend, man, the only thing keeping you from tasting that grace again, and I get it, man. Sometimes all this stuff, you're like, man, I'm just not feeling this. Or I'm not feeling that. Cool. Does your soul know right now? That's just time to go home, man. Girls, do you know, some of you, do you just know that like tonight you're just tired of it all and if you could change tonight, you would. You just don't know how. He's like, yeah, you. My voice is just inviting you. Come home. It's time to come back in. It's time to taste my grace again. It's time to taste my power again. So I'm going to do a couple things, and then I'm going to set something up because I, I just I want to give you an opportunity to respond. And so for the first group of you, here's what we're going to do literally. For all of us, we're just going to listen for his voice. Can we do that? How often do you get to just sit and listen, right? So right now, just let's just do that right now. Just put your stuff down, put your phone down, put all your stuff down. Now I'm just going to, I'm just going to real quick prayer of you, and I'm just going to ask you to listen for whatever God wants to say to you right now in this moment. I'll give, you an, I'll give you like a heads up on how he talks. It's not an audible boom from the heavens most of the time. Slash never for me. It is. When he starts whispering and he starts reminding me of all the voices I've been listening to. He just says, Matt. Matt. I know what you looked at last night. But you're my boy. Man, I know you feel like you're stuck, but I'm, you're my son. Some of you in the room, he's going to whisper to you and say, man, how long are you going to wait to make this decision? You felt it in your chest. Some of you, he's going to remind you of his love. Some of you, I, he might give you your purpose. I don't know, but when you listen, he said this, and this is what I know. The she, he said, this is, this is the deal. I'm the good shepherd, and the sheep know my voice.